So this slide, of course, says that portion control diets result in permanent weight loss very rarely. So Jenny Craig and Weight Watchers and all these diets, counting calories, all this stuff in the, in the, about portion sizes being bigger than ever before and people got to put it on their plate and eat less food, it's really not going to work because people will just eat more frequently if they eat smaller portions. They'll just eat again more frequently. But in any case, we have to desire smaller portions, not just put it on the plate. And to do that, to desire smaller portions, we really have to eat high nutrient, high volume foods, and we have to eat a lot of them. It has to be the majority of what you eat. So what foods are highest in nutrients? And what foods are highest in bulk and fiber and volume? What food, and here's an example of high volume foods. So let's categorize this into four categories. Raw vegetables, of course, lettuces, celery, cucumbers, snow peas, tomatoes. Raw vegetables are a critical necessity for excellent, excellent health. When you cook a raw vegetable or cook a vegetable, you lose about 35% of the isothiocyanides that you would have gleaned had you taken it in raw, in its raw form. You know, that's okay. I mean, cooked vegetables are still needed too because if we just ate all raw vegetables, we wouldn't get enough vegetables into us because we get f too filled up from them fast. And are, so what's wrong with a raw food diet for most people? Because some people can do okay on a raw food diet, but many people cannot because the raw vegetables take up so much bulk in their stomach and because they're not digested efficiently, that the majority of calories pass through you undigested because people don't chew well enough, that their caloric needs aren't met by raw vegetables enough and they have to eat too many fruits and too many nuts. So in proportionally, they're actually eating less vegetable nutrients by their diet being all raw than they would have had they included some cooked vegetables. You follow that? So even though you lose some nutrients for cooking a vegetable, you wind up getting in, you, you're able to get more vegetables in your diet, and vegetables become a higher proportion of your total caloric intake, increasing the nutrient density of your diet if you include cooked vegetables in your diet. So we had cooked vegetables we have, of course, and we can eat more cruciferous compounds. We couldn't, we couldn't eat, we can arugula and watercress and, and um, little kale raw, but it's hard to eat Brussels sprouts raw. It's hard to eat cabbage raw. You can shred some cabbage on your sal salad, but it's hard to eat a lot of you know, um, collard greens raw. It's better to put it into a soup. And when you soup cook, soup cook the collards, and you soup cook, mix it with leek, and you put in kale, and you put, when you put it into a soup, any nutrient loss from the, from, the water con, from the water solubilizing the nutrients goes into the water, and, that's, and you take it into the soup anyway. And you buy, so, it's very, so soups are a very healthy way to get nutrients. So let's go through this again. Raw vegetables, cooked greens, very important. The non-green vegetables, the ones that are low in, low in calories, like mushrooms, eggplant, tomatoes, peppers, cauliflower, and of course fresh fruits, these are the foods that are highest in nutrients. They have the highest nutrient per calorie quotients. Now how many of you know the nutrient per calorie quotient of all food? Because you should. So any of you know like, what's higher and lower in nutrients? If I name a food, any food, do you know the nutrient score, how high or low it'll be? Because you guys have to know this. So what's the food that's highest in nutrients of all foods? Anybody know? The green vegetables, right. And here's the point, that if, it was a, if the race was a two-mile race, green vegetables would win the race by, by a mile and three quarters, so much higher than everybody else. Let's look at these numbers now. I know it's probably hard to read these. It's, it's written very small. But let's look at the nutrient density now of various foods. And I, der I derived these numbers. So look at what's at the top there. Okay, I gave kale. Kale had the highest number. If you added up every nutrient known to man, right, multiplied it by the RDA to make, turn it into a, 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 num a factor, and then take all the other nutrients that don't have RDAs and go to the scientific literature and find out what would be the recommended value for those and make up an RDA based on the preponderance of evidence in the, in the medical literature and add those up and divide it, that by the number of calories. You get a certain number. You put kale at the top because it's the highest number. You make that number 1,000 by multiplying by some factor. And then, I, and then I put every other food related to kale based on how many nutrients it had. Okay? So clearly, eating, you can eat a vegan diet, right? You can have a vegan diet of pasta, bread, and look where whole wheat bread is. It's not too much higher over white bread and white pasta. See that? Now, on a scale of 1 to 1,000, look where rice and potato are, about 50. 
right? And, that's, and of course, carrots and green peppers and cabbage and artichokes and broccoli and asparagus and strawberries and blueberries and tomatoes and cherries are all, all those foods that are really healthy are above 100, right? The, here's the thing. Fruits and vegetables are between 100 and 1,000, and almost everything else is below 100. You got that? Now, how many of you eat the majority of your caloric intake above the 100-point line? Not many people. Most people on vegan diets get most of their calories from grains like potatoes and rice, right? And oil. Grains and oil are most of their, and that can't be a healthy diet.